while our debt is going up, we still have an apathetic debt that this government is inherited. And actually vowed that it will continue to pay. And as well as this new debt, this democratic government is actually, start, is actually um, starting to pick up because it's saying it does not have sufficient resources to meet the needs of the people. While some other money is sitting somewhere else. I mean, one key question that this government is not asking is why would it be classified as a middle income economy when it's sitting for the 2% of people who are in the world? Why is it not demanding, particularly now it's time, it's sitting as part of G20, why is it not demanding that when you talk about, when you measure the growth, the economic growth of any country, you need to include other components. Amongst those is literacy, is access to healthcare, is access to water. Because then in that way, our GDP will decline and as such will not be classified as, as, a, as a middle income. Because in that way, you will begin to shift your thinking and say, these are our priorities and then you will develop a backbone. Recently, the National uh, Planning Commission, for once, the, our dearest travel manual, actually admitted on the 17th of December that 49% of South Africans go earn less than uh, 524 a month. Who will live in 524? But one of the most striking and interesting things about both the state of the nation and this budget, they actually did not make any reference to that report. Because that report was a rare admission that we sitting on a time bomb. We have high poverty and high inequality. And you would expect that that should be the premise under which government begins to undertake its own government uh, uh, intervention. I think the last thing really is that government government has been given tax incentives. Brian mentioned that we, we 1994 with 15% unemployment, to date we're sitting at 40% as that, 42% as that limited. But in the last, even within the 15 years of being in democracy, for eight years they've been giving tax breaks to various sectors of the economy. And such sectors have not created jobs. Mm -hmm. Automobile amongst those. So you, you protect companies that do not demonstrate patriotism to this country, but as well to the, to the citizens. And the only thing they are protected to is their profit margins. We need to leave citizens in a destitute position so that they are constantly in a state of despair. And that's what we're finding ourselves as South Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, why are South Africans? They are, when they are all the rights that are constitutionally guaranteed, when government is not able to meet them, but they still sit in the middle. It's because people are destitute. So what people are doing is that they are living life on the basis of piecemeal, and they accept what the system is all about. Yes, there's a strong emotional uh, connection to the current ruling party, and people feel extremely loyal to I think one of the key things really is to pick one country. I mean, I'm, I agree people are saying housing. Housing is a huge issue. Food, the ability to afford bread, the ability to afford milk, the, you know. So, so the issue is no one can go to bed. With, no one can go to bed without food. But you can be able to shelter yourself and then someone else. But everybody, so, so food is the, is the public good for everyone else. And the question really is that why is this room not full? It's because people are, just, people are in a state of despair. So we need in our own organizing, we need to breathe in new psychological hope. Because people don't trust no hope for anything, that anything is likely to be built by anyone or no one will bring them any better life in, this, in the future. I also want to think that we need to organize women. I mean, women are the change agents. Yes. And currently, women in communities are in the periphery. A lot of local struggles are there. Right? <coughs> and we do need to, because women play a critical role in holding together households. And they feel the pressure of poverty. And all we need to do, we need to win women, because women is them who decide who's going to be, what we're going to be eating today, to have lights. You know, to eat well, washing powder, to children have access to transport fees. I think all you need to do when you take on your social rights, women are the table for you to actually change.